after all they only borrowed it for a little while just to fix it we didn't do anything wrong hardly by roger kuykendall i mean it isn't like we swiped anything we maybe borrowed a couple of things like but gee we put everything back like we found it pretty near even like the compressor we got from stinky brinker that his old man wasn't using and i traded my outboard motor for my old ma my father made me trade back but it was like skinny said you know skinny skinny thompson he's the one you guys keep calling a boy genius but shucks no he's no well yeah it's like skinny said we didn't need an outboard motor and we did need a compressor you've got to have a compressor on a spaceship everybody knows that and that old compression chamber that old man i mean mr fields let us use didn't have a compressor sure he said we could use it anyway he said we could play with it and skinny said we were going to make a spaceship out of it and he said go ahead well no he didn't say it exactly like that i mean well like he didn't take it serious sort of anyway it made a swell spaceship it had four portholes on it and an airlock and real bunks in it and lots of room for all the stuff that skinny put in there but it didn't have a compressor and that's why what stuff oh you know the stuff that skinny put in there like the radar he made out of a tv set and the anti-gravity and the atomic power plant he invented to run it all with he's awfully smart skinny is but he's not like what you think of a genius you know he's not all the time using big words and he doesn't look like a genius i mean we call him skinny cause he used to be skinny but he isn't now i mean he's maybe small for his age anyway he's smaller than me and i'm the same age as he is course i'm big for my age so that doesn't mean much does it well i guess stinker brinker started it he's always writing skinny about one thing or another and skinny never gets mad and it's a good thing for stinker too i saw skinny clean up on a bunch of ninth graders well a couple of them anyway they were saying well i guess i won't tell you what they were saying anyway skinny used judo i guess because there wasn't much of a fight anyway stinker said something about how he was going to be a rocket pilot when he grew up and i told him that skinny had told me that there weren't going to be any rockets and that anti-gravity would be the thing as soon as it was invented so stinker said it never would be invented and i said it would so and he said it would not and i said well if you're gonna keep interrupting me how can i all right anyway skinny broke into the argument and said that he could prove mathematically that anti-gravity was possible and stinky said sure he could and skinny said sure he could and stinky said sure he could like that honestly is that any way to argue i mean it sounds like two people agreeing only stinky keeps going sure like that you know and stinky what does he know about mathematics he had to take remedial arithmetic ever since no i don't understand how the anti-gravity works skinny told me but it was something about meson flow and stuff like that i didn't understand the atomic power plant made more sense where did we get what uranium gee no we couldn't afford uranium so skinny invented a hydrogen fission plant anyone can make hydrogen you just take zinc and sulfuric acid and deuterium you mean like heavy hydrogen no skinny said it would probably work better but like i said we couldn't afford anything fancy as it was skinny had to pay five or six dollars for the special square tubing in the anti-gravity and the plastic space helmets we had cost us 98 cents each and it cost a dollar and a half for the special tube that skinny needed to make the tv set into a radar you see we didn't steal anything really it was mostly stuff that was just lying around like the tv set was up in my attic and the old refrigerator that skinny used the parts to make the atomic power plant out of from and then a lot of stuff we already had 
like the skin diving suits we used to make space suits and the vacuum pump that skinny had already and the generator sure we did a lot of skin diving but that was last summer that's how we knew about old man brinker's compressor that stinky said was his and i traded my outboard motor for and had to trade back that's how we knew about mr field's old compression chamber and all like that the rocket well it works on the same principle as the atomic power plant only it doesn't work except in a vacuum hardly of course you don't need much of a rocket when you have anti-gravity everybody knows that well anyway that's how we built the spaceship and believe me it wasn't easy i mean with stinky all the time bothering us and laughing at us i had to do a lot of lawn mowing to get the money for the square tubing for the anti-gravity and the special tube for the radar and my space helmet stinky called the space helmets kid stuff he was always saying things like say hello to the folks on mars for me and bring back a bottle of canal number five and all like that you know of course they did look like kid stuff i guess we bought them at the five and dime and they were meant for kids of course when skinny got through with them they worked fine we tested them in the airlock at the compression chamber when we got the compressor in they tested out pretty good for half an hour then we tried them on in there well it wasn't a complete vacuum just 27 inches of mercury but that was okay for a test so anyway we got ready to take off stinky was there to watch of course he was saying things like farewell old brave pioneers and stuff like that i mean it was enough to make you sick he was standing there laughing and singing something like up in the air junior birdmen but when we closed the airlock door we couldn't hear him skinny started up the atomic power plant and we could see stinky laughing fit to kill it takes a couple of minutes for it to warm up you know so stinky started throwing rocks to attract our attention and skinny was scared he'd cracked the porthole or something so he threw the switch and we took off boy you should have seen stinky's face i mean you really should have seen it one minute he was laughing you know and the next minute he looks like a goldfish i guess he always did look like a goldfish but i mean even more like then and he was getting smaller and smaller because we had taken off we were gone pretty near six hours and it's a good thing my mom made me take a lunch sure i told her where we were going well anyway i told her we were maybe going to fly around the world in skinny and my spaceship or maybe go down to carson's pond and she made me take a lunch and made me promise i wouldn't go swimming alone and i sure didn't but we did go around the world three or four times i lost count anyway that's when we saw the satellite on radar so skinny pulled the spaceship over to it and we got out and looked at it the spacesuits worked fine too gosh no we didn't steal it or anything like skinny said it was just a menace to navigation and the batteries were dead and it wasn't working right anyway so we tied it onto the spaceship and took it home no we had to tie it on top it was too big to take inside with the antennas sticking out of course we found out how to fold them later well anyway the next day the russians start squawking about a capitalist plot and someone had swiped their satellite gee i mean with all the satellites up there who'd miss just one so i got worried they'd find out that we took it of course i didn't need to worry because stinky told them all right just like a tattletale so anyway after skinny got the batteries recharged we took it back and then when we landed there were hundreds of people standing around and mr anderson from the state department i guess you know the rest except maybe mr anderson started laughing when we told him and he said it was the best joke on the russians he'd ever heard i guess it was that when you think about it i mean the russians complaining about somebody swiping their satellite and then the state department answering a couple of kids borrowed it but they put it back one thing that bothers me though we didn't put it back exactly the way we found it but i guess it doesn't matter 
You see, when we put it back, we goofed a little. I mean, we put it back in the same orbit, more or less, but we got it going the wrong direction. The end of We Didn't Do Anything Wrong, Hardly by Roger Kuykendall